Ah, my friends, good to see you all again. I'm Eli Marta, this is the Free Melon Society. Thank you so much for tuning in today. What we're gonna be doing is doing another little showcase of my blood sugar response after a heavy, heavy, heavy carbohydrate, fruit rich, carbohydrate rich meal. And as with the last time I did this, it's good for me to occasionally post these insulin sensitivity or these blood sugar responses that I have to high fruit rich or high carbohydrate rich meals because there's this perpetual myth that carbohydrate and simple fruit sugars, natural fruit sugars found in food are the cause of diabetes or will exacerbate insulin resistance and of course this is nonsense. So as a long-term fruitarian now, when I say fruitarian I mean 99% fruit, no problems with the occasional leafy greens here or there, it's just more rare that I do that and nuts and seeds very 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 infrequently, almost never. Okay, so a couple weeks back I had a whole bunch of food in the house and I knew I was going to be eating and splurging more than I normally do. So I figured hey why don't I take my blood sugar readings before and after this big day of eating and see what happens. So I threw my data in chronometer as best as I could manage. These are rough estimates. I don't know exactly what the quantities were here, but it's a, it's a fairly good estimate, I think, of what I ate in a window of maybe, I don't know, three to four hours or so, and that's, that's what I had for the day. Okay, so if we're looking over here, we had a bunch of grapes, about a one clamshell package of grapes. I think it's about two pounds. We had about six persimmons, uh, give or take one or two, something like that. Um, I think it was six though. Then later on I had a lovely tomato based salad. So heavy on the tomatoes, some lettuce, it was all great. Uh, some banana peppers as well for a little bit of extra zing and flavor. Added some microgreens in there and then for dessert we had what is anathema to the diabetes community. We had dried fruit, oh my goodness, yes dried fruit. Not something that you should be making a habit out of eating, but today was the day. And I had ordered some hoshigaki, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, hoshigaki, I might be mispronouncing it. But it's Korean dried persimmon. Oh, actually these ones came from Turkey. If you've ever tasted this particular uh, type of dried persimmon, it is fantastic. It's a special technique that they use to get these persimmons like this. But if you haven't tried them, go order them from somewhere. I ordered them from Etsy. Etsy, 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 and yeah, you can you can get them. They came from Turkey. It didn't take very long. Unbelievably tasty. So I had a bunch of those for dessert. Okay, so this is a heavy, heavy fruit-rich, carbohydrate-rich meal with a dessert of dried fruits, which are calorie bombs. Okay, calorie nukes. <laughs> After a meal like that, we are going to record what my blood sugar was prior to that meal and afterward. I also have you know that the day prior to eating like this, I had very much the same thing. So this was two days of eating almost exactly like this. So I had a, a whole bunch of food and day one I ate exactly like this and we're going to be taking my blood sugar, my fasting blood sugar the next day, okay, after eating this meal. Or, or this day of eating, and then we're gonna do it again, and then we're gonna measure my blood sugar after. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so what was my fasting blood sugar prior to eating this meal? We're looking at about 4.4 uh, millimoles per liter. Now the typical units that they use to measure blood sugar is, I, I find it's generally in milligrams per deciliter. So in order to convert millimoles per liter to milligrams per deciliter, you have to multiply by 18. So this 4.4 figure that I have, you multiply that by 18, you get 79.2. So my fasting blood sugar is 79.2 milligrams per deciliter. So if you take a look at this chart over here, you can find these everywhere. You want to be from 4 to 5.9. Anywhere in the 4 to 5.9 millimoles per liter is where you want to be if you are non-diabetic, okay, in the fasted state. We're looking at about 12 hours at least from your last meal where you should be measuring your fasting blood sugar. So mine weighs in at about 4.4. This is a very normal, very healthy blood sugar response to food. If we're measuring in milligrams per deciliter, which is the more common way to measure blood sugar, typically what you'd see in reference ranges is 120 milligrams per deciliter and below. So I'm 79.2, well below that. So we're definitely not diabetic and we're definitely not pre-diabetic either. 
Okay, so after my day of eating is done, we gotta wait two hours after you finish your last morsel of food to measure your postprandial blood sugar or your post meal blood sugar. It's, it's generally two hours that you want to wait. That's apparently the standard. So two hours after I've eaten this meal, I'll take my blood sugar reading and the blood sugar is five, okay? Five millimoles per liter. So translating that into milligrams per deciliter, that works out to 90 milligrams per deciliter or five millimoles per liter. So if we take a look at this chart, what we can see is that for a normal person, all right, for a normal person who's got a normal blood sugar response, two hours after eating, their blood sugar has to be 140 milligrams per deciliter or below. Okay, so anything below 140 would be normal. It means that there's some leeway. It means that your blood sugar should rise after you finish eating and then slowly it starts to dip back down to normal levels throughout the day so after a meal it goes up and then it slowly starts tapering down now as you can see here my blood sugar response was 90 after this meal after this huge meal of carbohydrate rich food fruit rich food so that means according to these charts my blood sugar went back down to not only acceptable levels for a normal person post meal, post prandially, but it went back to a normal person's reference range for fasting blood sugar, right? Meaning these results after a meal could very well be an average person's blood sugar before even eating, 12 hours after. You see what I'm saying? It means that when food goes in, the blood sugar is taken out of the blood into the cells very, very efficiently. I'm not an exception here. Lots of people who eat a whole food plant-based diet that is extremely low in fat, in concentrated fats, I would imagine that all of you guys out there have a similar result. I'm just, I'm just here showing that I'm, I'm in the same boat. Even though I probably eat way more fruit than the average, per, proportionally speaking, way more fruit as a proportion of the diet than the average person does. Okay, so basically that's it, you know, creeping up ever so slowly to the decade mark where I can say that I've been doing this for a decade. Yeah, still no trace of this apparent specter of diabetes or insulin resistance that apparently comes when you eat carbohydrate, which is just the most irresponsible condemnation of carbohydrate that's out there in the health community and it still exists it's very pervasive so we're we're trying to show that this is absolutely not the case living proof along with all my other friends in the whole food plant-based community out there so you guys are rock stars you guys kill it lots of fantastic educators that are spilling the beans and giving the truth about this subject so anyway i'm just lending my voice to uh, do the same all right Guys, subscribe to the Free Melon Society if you like videos like this and you'd like to see more. Give me a comment, let me know what your thoughts are, and I'll see you guys next time here on the channel, okay? Mwah. Love you very much, okay? Peace and love. We'll see you next time.